Hare Krishna. As, as you said that uh, humility is required in bhakti, but um, what happens that in psychological perspective, humility means inferiority complex. So people adv- uh, tend to advise uh, such people to go to counselor or psychiatrist. So would you like to comment on this? Okay, good question. The question is that we say that we should become humble in bhakti, but often uh, there is people who are humble, they, they are thought of as having inferiority complex and uh, they are told to go to psychologist psychology for counseling. There's a fundamental difference between humility and inferiority complex. Inferiority complex is false ego frustrated. Humility is false ego rejected. (laughs) What that means is, when a person has inferiority complex, that person wants to have an ego. I want to be big, I want to be famous, I want the whole world to respect me. But, no, I don't have any talents by which the world will respect me. So what to do? I become frustrated. So, humility, so inferiority, feelings of inferiority, with its inferiority complex, that is false ego frustrated. Whereas humility is false ego rejected. That means a devotee who is humble, a person doesn't seek happiness by, through the recognition by the world. A devotee seeks happiness through the connection with Krishna. And by uh, by that connection with Krishna, the devotee gets a higher happiness and that's why it's false ego rejected. So that's firstly a difference. Now if you look at uh, further, if you look at the history of this term inferiority complex, how did it come up? See, whether it is India or the West, prior to the 20th century, 19th century and before that, the, the whole economy was largely agrarian and people lived in their own communities, whether it was villages or towns, and they lived in their own social circles. But when the industrialization of the economy happened, then there was urbanization, and then when there was migration, then people had to, practically speaking, for their employment, for their survival, they had to compete with the whole world, because they were going to unfamiliar places for jobs or for education, and then, At that time, if you look at the history of English language, there was no such word called personality before the 19th century. Now, but from the 20th century onwards roughly, the person became not important, the personality became important. Personality means how you look. What is the impression that you give to people? Now, what are the impressions inside you doesn't matter. (laughs) <laughs> what is the impression that you can cast before others? That's what is important. And for that, there are certain external attributes. You, know, you should speak in this way, you should walk in this way, you should conduct yourself in this way. So a lot became dependent on external attributes which had very little to do with the core character of the person. And because of this, because of excessive emphasis on personality, at the expense of the person. Because of excessive emphasis on personality at the emphasis of the person, the sense of self-identity shifted from who I am to who I appear to the world. And that appearance is always unsteady. So inferiority complex largely results when we buy into a worldview that glamorizes certain characteristics of the personality. Now, God has given us all different abilities. And with our abilities, we all can make a constructive contribution. We all can lead worthwhile, productive, valuable lives with whatever abilities we have. But when we buy into society's definition, if you have these qualities, if you have these looks, this kind of this kind of speech, this kind of personality, then you are a successful person. 
otherwise you are good for nothing so once we buy into that definition then it is natural that there is going to be inferiority complex why because the kind of you know one of the easiest ways to become miserable <laughs> is to start watching advertisements just watch advertisements you know advertisements of people who have perfect figures people who have handsome looks people who have wealth people who have uh, charisma people who have fluency in speech they have everything and when we see that we'll actually start feeling inferior so actually speaking the materialistic world view which divorces the person from the personality that is the cause of the inferiority complex so when we start practicing bhakti yoga we understand who we are as souls when we understand our identity as souls at that time we understand that we are parts of krishna and irrespective of how much the world recognizes us or not krishna still loves us and the understanding of our indestructible spiritual identity the understanding of krishna's eternal unconditional love for us that becomes a devotee's basis for self identity and self worth and that's how by spiritual education and by spiritual purification by spiritual realization a devotee can become free from inferiority complex so certainly we should not mistake humility to be inferiority complex rather the two are very different things and in fact the development of bhakti of which humility is a part the development of bhakti can counter inferiority complex at its very root does that answer your question thank you